Thanks for joining us here on 90s Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. The Denver Nuggets mm. were hot for a long time. Were. Then March came along, and the Nuggets, since then, not so great. But for an idea as the Nuggets look ahead to the postseason about where they are, where they may top out, we're now joined by 90s sports reporter Jacob Toby, who has covered the Nuggets closely. Um, Jacob, I mentioned the Nuggets looks like they're in line, and to be transparent, we're recording this on April the 5th. Nuggets in that number one spot. They did lose the Houston Rockets mm. the night before um, right. as we're recording this. But again, kind of from a broad perspective, Nuggets had a great start to the season, not so hot of late. What's gone wrong? Yeah, I think, uh, well, let me say this. Like, the number one seed is crucial to them because they're one of the best, I think maybe the best, home teams in the NBA when they play at Ball Arena. Uh, it's, it's mostly usually a sellout crowd, and they, they play well at home, like most NBA teams do, like most pro sports teams do. <laughs> you play well at home. But it's so important for this squad to to be that top seed because as you get closer and closer you know, to that championship series, that final series, you want to be playing at home in those big games. And this team feeds off the crowd. Uh, last year, they weren't as uh, great you know, at home, which is weird. They were better on the road. Um, so they flipped the script and hmm. they've been really good at home. Uh, that the, the Houston loss that you're talking about is on the road to one of the worst teams in the NBA. And we've seen that over the last couple of weeks. They've, they've taken some hits in terms of playing down to opponents. I think a lot of the times for younger teams that are good, they can sometimes play down to younger opponents. Just they don't have that experience. They don't have a lot of veterans on the team. Nuggets do. They have Jeff Green. They have DeAndre Jordan who have been there, who have done that a little bit in this, in this league. But still, their young stars are, are, are young. Uh, Jokic is in the prime of his career. Murray's young. Michael Porter Jr. is young. So I don't know if it's they're losing focus. Uh, there's been talk about, you know, are they tuning out Michael Malone, the head coach? I, I don't really buy into that. I mean, he's a great coach. Everyone loves playing for him. Mm. I'd love to play for him if I was in the NBA. Like, he's a great guy to get behind. And so maybe I think they're just kind of they're lollygagging. They're, it's, it's that last push before the playoffs. The last week before the playoffs, they just want to get to when the games matter. But you want to lock up that number one seed, and I think they will. Um, and I think that that when when they get that number one seed, it'll it'll be good. But right now they're slotted to play the the Suns in the second round, Phoenix Suns, and the Suns have Kevin, Kevin Durant, Durant, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton. So some some people are like, well, if they slip to the two seed, then they wouldn't have to face the Suns until the conference finals. So you're gonna have to play the Suns eventually, and you're gonna have to play. You know, to win a championship, you have to beat. The best teams. The best teams in the NBA. So they're, it's not like they're scared of playing the Suns. I'm just saying it, they'd probably rather push it off till the Western Conference Finals rather than the, the second round in case they slip. So, um, But there is some pressure on this team to, to play well at the end of the season, to ride that momentum in. You know, you look at the Avs. The Avs are the, kind of the complete opposite. They, they're playing really good hockey into the postseason, and that's what you want. Like the NCAA tournament, you want to play your best ball in conference tournament play and then into the NCAA tournament because you need that momentum. Now, the NBA playoffs aren't one and done like the March Madness is, but you still want to be feeling good, playing your best. And they're just they're not doing that right now. Jokic had you know some uh, right calf uh, tightness that he'd been dealing with, so he kind of looked iffy when he played against Houston. Jamal Murray's a little banged up, too. And you're always worried about Michael Porter Jr.'s back. back. Uh, that's just, that is what it is. He's looked good and healthy. Most of the season, though, so that's fine. But you're always, it's still in the back of your mind. The second he goes down, the second he's grabbing something, the second he trips, you're always like, man, hopefully this isn't the thing. So as long as they're healthy and, and, and Jokic is, and, and uh, Murray kind of get back to, to where they were in, in, you know, a month before, I think they'll be, they'll be fine. But they have to be careful that they're not lollygagging in that first round because it's the NBA, anything can happen, you never know. And this team has you know, lost in the first and second round the last couple of years. And they want to change that, so hopefully they do. So let's back things on up here. So you got Nikola Jokic. You mentioned the stars of this Nuggets team. You got Nikola Jokic, mm-hmm. back-to-back MVP. You have got uh, Michael Porter Jr. You mentioned young, young, young emerging superstar uh, Jamal Murray, back from the ACL injury, and you've, of course you got Aaron Gordon yeah. and the cast players as well. In your opinion, who would be maybe one or two keys to watch for? You mentioned that momentum getting into the postseason. Anybody who really needs to pick it up as we head into the first round? Yeah, I mean. Pick it up. I mean, Michael Porter Jr. needs to continue what he's doing. Um, when he hits threes and he's defending, it just adds a total different element. Because, like, Jokic is going to be Jokic. Jamal Murray 
is going to be Jamal Murray. That, that X factor is Michael Porter Jr. Uh, will he bring it on the defensive end every single night in the playoffs? Because so we didn't see that two years ago when they played the Portland Trailblazers and then they lost to the Phoenix Suns in the second round. I was there both times. I was in both cities uh, covering those games, and, and he wasn't great defending. And they didn't have Jamal Murray that year, so they lost. But uh, mm. they may still have lost even with Jamal with the way Michael Porter was playing. So he's, he's key. He really is. And I think it'll be interesting to see if Michael Malone wants to play the rookie, Christian Brown. He is a really good defender, brings energy, toughness. Uh, he went to Kansas, so he has that basketball smart that he learned from Bill Self, who's been there for a long time, won a national titles. And so I, hopefully, I think, you know, the, the, one of the bigger questions this season is, like, how much do they play Christian Brown? How much does Michael Malone want to play Christian Brown? Michael Malone is notorious for not really wanting to play a lot of younger guys. Mm. But Brown, I think he's, he's, he's had to play Brown because he's been that good every time he puts him in. So Brown, I, I look at. Brown, I think, could be a, a big piece in the playoffs. And Uncle Jeff Green, he's like 37 or whatever years old, 36, 37. Mm. He's still pushing. He's still plugging, still dunking on dudes' heads. Um, he's been, you know, in deep playoff runs. Uh, when he was in Boston, he played with LeBron when he was in Cleveland. He's been around the NBA. He's played, like, played on bad teams, played on good teams. Uh, he's kind of that veteran guy that knows what to do in certain, certain, certain situations. And he'll, play out, he'll come off the bench, play 10 to 15 minutes, give you some good defense, some, some smarts, some toughness. And so I kind of look at those three guys. Okay. Before the start of March, the Nuggets were in the running for best record in the NBA. Yeah. Since then, as we just talked about, they have slipped, no doubt about that. What would you characterize the Nuggets' chances? Do you still think they're the favorites to win the West? I do. Hmm. I do. But maybe the national people don't anymore. I think that's when Kevin Durant got traded to Phoenix, it kind of shifted. And I, I understand uh, Kevin Durant, when healthy, is arguably the best player in the world, second, third best player in the world. And they haven't, you know, I, I believe they haven't lost yet with him in the lineup, or maybe if they've lost one. I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, they've, their offense is unreal um, because he's one of the best offensive players of this generation and NBA history. And so when Kevin Durant, you know, goes to a team that already was good and that went to the finals a couple of years ago, like that's going to change people's opinions. But if Nuggets have home court, I still, I still think it's them. Um, but it's, it's, they have a lot to prove, man. Like Jokic has a lot to prove. Everyone's talking about the MVP race. I can tell you, he doesn't care about it now. He never cared about it, never will care about it. He wants to win a title and he knows like if, if it was his choice, win a third straight MVP or win a title, he's picking title any day of the week because that'll cement his legacy more. That's what he wants to do. He wants to win a title and then go home to his horses in Serbia in the summer. So I, I believe they're still the favorite. Um, the way they're playing as of late has lessened my confidence, but still, like at, at the end of the day, it's the end of the season. They might just be wanting to get to the playoffs, might not be trying as hard. Um, and, but, yeah, I still think they're the, they're the favorite. Can I just say that it's still so cool to me. I've been to a couple of Nuggets games this season. That the best basketball player is in our city, yep. and you get to just go down to Ball Arena, and you get to go watch the best basketball player on the planet mm -hmm. right here in Denver. Isn't that so cool? It's it's crazy, and it makes you like want to you know appreciate it because you, that that these things don't happen too often in any NBA city or any professional sports city. There's there's runs of teams of dynasties that happen, but they don't come around too often. And the Nuggets hope that they're, you know, the next kind of in line to create a little dynasty here. But you need to win, and you need to, you know, you need to get to the conference finals. You need to get to the NBA finals. And but to like these little moments in the season when Jokic is putting up these ridiculous games and these moments, uh, watching him grow are cool. We need to like appreciate those and. He's such a different superstar. He just doesn't. He's not a. He's not like a superstar like personality wise. Personality, but he's a superstar talent. And the fact that he doesn't act like a guy that has it all, that's making the most money in the NBA, that's you know one of the best, if not the best players in the NBA. Like the fact that he doesn't act like that, I think is like a cool little thing that Denver can keep to itself. Because and it's kind of like Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo with Milwaukee doesn't really act like. A superstar either he's him i don't know if it's like a european thing like mm. you know he's from greece Jokic is from serbia maybe it's just the way they they grew up in like their character but 
fans, I think, are appreciating, like, yeah, we don't need, like, a superstar that's, like, out there all the time, that's, like, doing commercials, that's, like, doing all these things. He shows up to work, shows up in a nice suit, plays basketball, wins games, goes home, wants to win a championship, and then will go home in the summer and do his own thing. And that's, like, a cool Denver thing that not a lot of other cities have in their stars. Well, tell me about Michael Malone a bit, too, the Nuggets head coach, longtime head coach. You mentioned that players love playing for him. And yeah. You seem to have a lot of confidence in him as well. I do, yeah. I mean, he... He's, I think he's the longest, other than Greg Popovich with the Spurs, I believe he's like the longest tenured coach in the NBA. He's been here almost a, you know, a decade. Uh, we're, you know, we're getting up there in terms of years here. And he's stuck with the program. I mean, he's a hard-nosed guy. He'll get on, your, he'll get on you. Um, he's not afraid to call you out in the media when he's talking to us. Um, but he'll love you. And he'll, he'll, he'll wrap his arm around you and tell you what you need to hear, good or bad. And that's what you want out of a coach. He can relate to the younger guys. He's not, he, you know, he, he's not a player. He's not like a player's age, but he can still relate to them. And he's been a great community guy. You know, he's, he's, he was there with you know, the Elijah McClain stuff. Like he's, he's close with that family. He still talks mm-hmm. to them to this day. And I, I have so much respect for him. But, again, tab it pressure on him, too. He needs to win. He needs to get to another conference finals, get to a finals, make a push for a championship. Um, because that would, that would cement his legacy. You know, even George Carl with the Nuggets, they didn't get to a, a finals. And they fired him. They fired him. They fired George Carl. Uh, George Carl went to the conference finals, didn't get to the finals, and he's one of the Nuggets greats. And so if Malone gets to a finals... I mean, he's up there already with George Carl. Not in terms of amount of wins. I mean, he might get there eventually. But I, there's, there is some pressure there on Malone, too. I think everyone's sort of feeling it. And that's why this is such a big, big postseason. They, they, need to, they need to go deep. If they lose in the first or second round, there's going to be some tough questions being asked around here. Right, because so- they got the players. Malone's a great coach, but you know, how much more time can you give someone? Absolutely. And that's going to be one of the big questions heading in. So... Give me a reason why the Nuggets do end up making the NBA Finals. Let's say they win the West, and give me a reason why they flop out in the first or second round. Yeah, I, I, if, if they flop out of the first or second round, it's, it's not because of Jokic. It's because Murray somehow doesn't look the same. You know, I said he's banged up. He's got a couple nagging injuries going on. Mm-hmm. If he's banged up and if Porter somehow falls off shooting-wise, shooting slump, defensive slump, that right there, that's the reason why they're going to get bounced, uh, you know. If they play, like, the Lakers in the second round and they play LeBron, he gets hot. LeBron's the greatest, arguably, of all time. Michael Jordan, but... Not, <laughs> Neither no, here nor there. We're not, we're not doing that today. <laughs> uh, but if they run into LeBron somehow and, like, Magic comes out of Pandora's box and they, like, I'm not going to fault them, I guess, because it's LeBron, but that, that's, that's a reason, I guess, they could not make it out of the second round. The reason why they go to the finals is because everything's clicking. Yeah, they're healthy. Jokic is, is the best player in the world. Um, they take care of business. They, take, they, they get that home court advantage. They take care of business at home. They're better on the road this year. So they can, they, now they have the ability to win playoff games on the road. So th- those are sort of how they flop out and how they make it all the way. And if they get to the finals, you never know. They could play Boston. They could play Milwaukee. They could play Philly. Those are probably the, the only three teams that are going to make it out of the East. And all present challenges, all have great players, all have top five players in the NBA. Giannis, Jason Tatum with Boston, Giannis with Milwaukee, and then Embiid, who's obviously at the center of the MVP discussion. So it'll be interesting. But again, I'll just stress, there is pressure on this team right now. All right. I'll put you on the spot here. Okay. What happens? What do you think happens? I think they make it to the NBA Finals. Um, Mm, First time ever. I think they, yep, the first time. And also, like, mentioning, like, them winning the West. It'd be the first time ever they finish number one in the West and win the West, too. So, like, historic stuff could be coming. So if they win the West, that's historic. If they get to the finals, that's historic. They've never done that. Uh, they never won a championship. So do I pick them in the finals against? I, I, I think they could beat Milwaukee. I think they could beat Philly. But if they play Boston, I don't know if they could beat Boston. So, um, and I, I like, I, I think... It'd be tough for them just defensively just because Boston has, like, two, two stars. Milwaukee really has one with Giannis. Joel uh, Embiid with Philly is, like, the guy. Harden's good, but he's not what he was, like, a couple years ago. So 
They, it, it depends on matchups. But I, can they win the championship? Absolutely. It depends on who they play. Uh, do I think they do? I'm going to say no, just because I think either Milwaukee or Boston is going to be in the finals, and I don't think they – or I, I should say, I think Boston is going to be in the finals, so I don't think they should, they'll beat them. But if it's Milwaukee or, or Philly, Philly I, I think they could beat them. But I don't know. Is that straddling the fence a little bit? I say, so we'll, we'll take you at this. We'll say that you, you're – I think they're making the finals. How about that? They're making that's, the finals. That's for sure. They're going to make the finals. And they probably lose. And they probably the, lose in the finals. In the NBA finals. And the, and, but, that, but if they get there, that's just the next rung on the ladder. If they get there, that's great. Um, if they Running win, that's amazing. Yeah. Just, NBA finals wow. by Jacob. So he, he's scribbled. Too. Yeah, he's just kidding. He's and just scribbled around now. Jacob Toby, not just a good indoor soccer player. Uh-oh. Here we go. Mention the 49ers real quick. 49ers, yeah. We had a <laughs> rough run in the playoffs for ourselves. But, uh, they don't care about that. They, you don't care about that. 90s <laughs> sports. Jacob Toby, thanks for joining us here. Thank you, man.